Hi, I'm Gavi. Welcome back to another video. Today, I finally have set up this camera because if not, the class will be very boring. So I have set up this camera so that you all can have a little bit of eye contact with me. And today, we're going to look at uh, Terengganu PT Tiger Science paper for their P Tiger trial last year, 2019. Okay, Section A, we've already done. Okay, 20 questions, we've already done. Now, we have to go into bagian B and bagian C. Okay, It's going to be uh, quite long, but let's try to go through it uh, faster because we are going to go through all questions. Okay, all questions. Okay, come. Let's look at the first Okay, question in bagian B. Okay, chemistry, okay, because it's showing the periodic table. So they give you P, S, T, R, they ask you, now A, mark on the metal group. Okay, so we know from there, so we know from there, uh, we have uh, the left side, which is a 1 and 2, we have the middle side, which is the S, okay, left side 1 and 2, middle side S, and we have the right side, which is T and R. So question asking you, which is the metal group, okay, now you know, now you know that on the right side, okay, group 18, we call it the um, noble gases, okay, which I will be the helium, uh, all that kind of gases. Then, on going to the left a bit more, we will have uh, things like oxygen, and carbon and nitrogen, all that. So, you have some sort of idea, okay, that T and R is all the gases, or all the things like carbon and oxygen, which you know, which you know is non-metal, which you know is non-metal. Okay, let's just check again, let's just check again. P, how about P? You know that P is on the left side, which is left side, which is the side where it has the lithium, sodium, potassium. Then you go over a little bit, you have the beryllium, magnesium, aluminium. Betul ke tak? Sebelah kiri will be all the metals, sebelah kanan will be all the non-metals. Okay, so what happens is we know that P confirm. Okay, confirm we will mark on the metal group. How about S? You know that S in the middle will have what? Will have things like silicon. Okay? And these are the also uh, semi-metals or you would have some metals overlapping in group S also. Okay? Because like silicon, it will be um, semi-metals. What happens is on S, yes, we will mark on the metal group. Okay? T and R mesti tak ada. Sebab T and R will be non-metal. So we leave that out. Okay? Okay, come. Let's go to B. And now they're asking you, um, uh, the matter, we have an uh, element and a compound and we have three samples. So first we must understand what are element and what are compounds first. Because element, element maksudnya apa? Element maksudnya, you're talking about that substance only by itself. Bukan campuran, not a chemical uh, mixture, not a physical mixture. So what happens is element is, uh, we call it single, single. Okay, single substance. That means if you're talking about gold, it's only gold. If you're talking about silver, only silver. How about compound? Compound is when, when it's a combination. Combination, campuran. Okay, campuran, cantuman. Cantuman antara apa? Two or more. Okay, two or more. Two or more. Different type of element come together to make compound. Macam apa? Macam uh, sodium chloride, which is your salt. Macam calcium chloride, which is your, uh, 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 like, uh, shells and all that, and uh, calcium carbonate, okay, which is a combination, okay, a combination of metal and non-metal together, okay, tak apa. So, we have a good idea of what element was compound, cukup untuk menjawab soalan. So, let's go. Gula, which is sugar. You know that sugar is actually made out of, uh, from the sugar cane plant, uh, sugar cane plant. Now, you must understand that when you, I uh, studied that first part of science which is talking about the uh, sugars, okay? You have the carbohydrates, the glucose, uh, you know that kind of thing. You know that glucose is the basic unit, basic unit of sugar, basic unit of sugar. Now, what happens is, when it is inside this packet, dalam packet ni, gula pray, nampak ke tak? Uh, gula pasir or, 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 or gula uh, kasar, inside, there is not going to be only glucose not only glucose, okay? The bijirin or even the, the the sugar that you're going to pick up, that is not directly going to be glucose. But inside, have glucose. But that thing where you're holding the sugar may not be glucose. Because we have other sugars like maltose, like sucrose. So what happens is, these things will be made out of or made out of combination of glucose. Maksudnya, glucose tambah glucose akan menjadikan gula yang lain dan gula yang lain itu akan akan merupakan gula yang kamu gunakan. Yang kamu ambil daripada paket gula kasar tu. Okay? Gula kasar tu. So, what happens is, we know that gula definitely eats a compound. But I told you, if it's element, if it's element, if it's element, what happens? Glucose saja. Glucose saja. Tapi, dalam gula, uh, paket gula kasar ni, what happens? It's actually glucose, it's actually glucose plus 
glucose, you will have different type of sugar. Different type of sugar. Okay? Okay, now, spices. Now, do you realize they give you two choices, which is element and which is compound. But there's a third choice they never give you, which is what? Mixture. Which is mixture. Now, mixture to apa? Campuran. Campuran. Campuran which are doing physically, which is you mix two things together. So, what happens is that actually will be the answer for spices. Rempah. Why? Because you know that inside the spices, you have many different types of spices. You have star anise, you have cardamom, you have cinnamon, you have whatever. Okay? Yeah, yang berbagai-bagai jenis. So, what happens is, you know this rempah is, you are going to grind it. Or even you are going to sell it just as it is. You are going to make mix mix everything. Okay, kacaukan semua rempah yang ada, uh, kamu ada. Okay, then you going to masukkan ke dalam plastik. Okay, then you sell it to your customers. So, what happens is, tak ada cantuman which is happening uh, chemically. Not chemically. Okay, not chemically. So, we cannot call it compound. Call it mixture. Mixture. Why? Because it's a physical. Okay. Physical, campuran secara physical. Okay, now how about gold? We know that gold, like I've told you just now, eh, when there is only gold, when there is only gold, and you can see here, it says uh, fine gold. Nah. You see here, huh? it says 999.9. Nah. 999.9. Huh? So, 999 gold actually means what? Nah? Means 99.9% uh, is gold. 99.9% gold. Okay, that means it's very, very pure. Very, very pure. Okay, to, uh, very, very pure gold. So, what happens is, this will be element. Okay, this will be element. Okay, come, let's go. Next. Now, second, write the true statements and uh, uh, pangkah for the false statements about the nerve systems. Nerve system, okay? So, nervous system, system saraf. We know that there is a central, peripheral, but let's see what they are asking. Okay, pupil becomes smaller when we see in a dark room. Ada perkaitan dengan sistem saraf ke tak? Tak ada. Why? Because the reaction, which is the pupil, anak mata mencari, mencari kecil, that is not a reaction of the nervous system. It's actually a reaction of what? Of your eye. The eye. The eye itself. The eyeball itself. So, bukan sistem saraf tidak berkaitan. Okay. Second, impulse can only be interpreted by brain. Yes, impulse. Because, like, uh, we have to interpret the brain when we will have the effect carried out by our muscles when the brain send the message to our muscles, that is only when uh, uh, we will react, such as taking our hand away from the hot water. So, this impulse must be interpreted by the brain first to generate a reaction. Okay? So, correct. Third, playing badminton is involuntary action, which is untrue. Because badminton, when you want to go and swing, uh, you want to go and smash, up, uh, you move around, that is voluntary. That's number one, that's problem. Voluntary actions, okay? That means, you mengawal badan kamu sendiri adakah kamu you nak smash ke or you want to uh, tahan the ball ke that is all your voluntary action and you know that when the system saraf membuat reaction that is an involuntary reaction so this is wrong okay about fault without the functional brain voluntary actions cannot be done correct why because like i said just now if you want to save the ball if you want to block the ball if you want to smash the ball it's all your decision Okay, it's all your decision. Sekarang, I akan membuat keputusan nak lompat, baru smash ke, atau I terus smash. Jadi, you must have the brain for you to generate this idea, uh, make your decision, then you can go and play. So, voluntary actions can be done. That's correct. Okay, come, let's go to the next. Let's go to the next. Okay, hopefully this video is not too long. Okay, because a lot of questions to discuss, I realise. If it's too long, we will probably break it apart. Okay, let's see the third question. Now, talking about carbon oxygen cycle. Carbon oxygen cycle. Okay, name the process P that has happened inside the carbon oxygen cycle. So, if you look at P happening in the tree, happening in the tree, and what happens is, carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide yang masuk ke dalam tumbuhan itu, akan keluarkan oksigen. So, carbon dioxide go in, oxygen come out. What happens when this, what process is the name when this happens is photo, photosynthesis. Sebab, Semasa photosynthesis, or if you want to BM spelling, you should know, it's F-O-T-O-S-I-N-T-E-S-I-S, -S -S, photosynthesis, is when the, carbon, the, the tumbuhan akan menggerap carbon dioxida. Right? They're going to absorb carbon dioxide. When you breathe out as a human, you breathe out the carbon dioxide, they're going to absorb carbon dioxide. After that, they are going to go through photosynthesis process, release back the oxygen for us to be able to uh, 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 breathe, breathe back the oxygen. Okay, so photosynthesis. Now B, state one condition for the process of P to happen. So, State one condition. What happens is, sunlight. That's number one. We must need sunlight. Okay, if there's no sunlight, 
the photosynthesis cannot happen. That's why we need the green leaf, uh, chlorophyll, chloroplast to be able to absorb the sunlight. Okay, what happens? Uh, carbon dioxide, tanpa carbon dioxide, you cannot, nothing to absorb. Nothing, you cannot absorb nitrogen. You cannot absorb other gases. You must have carbon dioxide. So, carbon dioxide must happen to have photosynthesis. But third one, chlorophyll. You must have chlorophyll. If you have no chlorophyll, maksudnya tak boleh, uh, you cannot absorb the sunlight. Okay, you cannot uh, menggerap cahaya matahari. So, we cannot carry out photosynthesis so so chlorophyll is important what is the first answer water you also need water if there is no water they are unable to convert unable to convert the uh, carbon dioxide into oxygen so water also now see in your opinion what are the two effects that might be that might happen when the tree is cut down number one Komposisi karbon dioksida dalam udara akan meningkat. The carbon dioxide is going to increase. Why? Because there is no plant for it to absorb the carbon dioxide. So, it's going to increase, definitely. Kedua, what happens is, komposisi oksigen dalam udara akan mengurang. Why? Because there is no enough plant for it to generate or to release this oxygen. So, what happens is, oxygen level is going to decrease. Generally, the oxygen level that we need to breathe in is going to decrease. Okay, fine. Now, third, what is going to happen? Uh, global warming. Okay, global warming. Maksud apa? Maksud apa? Suhu akan meningkat. That means the temperature of this uh, globe or our earth will increase. So, that will make, globally, it will make it warm, make it hot. Okay, so global warming. Okay, then if you want our answer, or what can we call it? We call it greenhouse effect. Okay, greenhouse effect. Okay, yang berkaitan dengan uh, the this uh, ozone layer, UV ray masuk ke dalam bumi kita, that sort of thing. Okay, so global warming greenhouse effect. Okay, so now let's move on. Number four, analyze the right answers regarding space weather. The dark areas visible on the sun. So if you see it, there is going to be the sun. Okay, there's going to be the sun. Okay, red color. There's going to be the sun, and then there's going to be a very dark spot there. And what happens is inside this, we call it what? We call it the sun spot. Okay, tumpuk matahari. We call it the sun spot. Okay, sun spot. Okay, that's the answer for sun spot. Now, second question: What gas particles that burst out at high speed into the outer space? So what happens is, the matahari you'll be able to see. It bukan bulat, it bukan, it's not one sphera that is nice, huh? and it bukan is one berkilat and licin one, no. It, it will have a lot of this flare come out, a lot of flare come out, okay? A lot of the flare come out, okay? And this flare is going to eject particle, particle, eject, eject, eject this particle, okay? Or burst, menyemburkan, menyemburkan zarah gas is going to burst the gas particles into the outer space. So what happens is, the answer will be, Solar flame. Solar flame. Okay. Solar flame. Okay. Come. B. Fill in the blank with the correct answer. To launch a satellite into the space. To launch a satellite into the space. What do you need to send the satellite into space? Of course, you need to have something to bring it up first. From the uh, ground, we need to have something to bring it up first. Then what happens is, that thing you bring it up, you're going to attach the satellite. Okay. Let's say the satellite here. Attach the satellite onto, onto this, what we call the, the rock rocket okay onto the rocket so it can burst out the flames for it to eject high into the sky okay without the rocket or the satellite on its own it's not able to fly up okay from uh, the, the our earth onto the outer space okay so we need rocket b to collect information about objects in the space so you need what objects huh? you want to uh, you want to what uh, uh, collect information huh and it's not just you can see from the earth one, not the telescope you can see. Huh? You must go there. Possibly you collect, uh, you collect the samples or you even collect the dimensions or even you collect the sound and all that kind of thing which your telescope cannot do. So we need a machine okay, to do that. We call it the space probe. Okay? Or in BM version, kuangkasa. Kuangkasa. Okay? So I believe uh, this uh, video is uh, not that long yet. We will continue with the rest of the bagian B. Okay? Now, okay, so let's continue with the rest of the bagian B. A, it shows a coconut tree falling. Okay, coconut tree falling. So if you can see that um, at, it's asking you at the height of 2 meters, which is going to be here, what is the ratio to the potential energy to the kinetic energy? So you know, so you know, uh, let's make it simple. Uh. Let's not calculate anything. Let's just make it simple. 
You know that when it is from 4 meters down here, you know that the potential energy, which is the PE, that's the, the PE, the potential energy, which is going to be tenaga keupayaan when it's on top there, is going to be at maximum. Maximum maksudnya apa? Let's put it at 4. At 4 units. 4 units. 4 meter lah. Let's make it easy. Okay? 4 units. What happens is, when it is reach, reach the 2 meter, 2 meter actually ya, sebenarnya apa? Sebenarnya setengah daripada jarak 4 meter tu. Sebenarnya setengah. So what happens is, you know that your PE, which is your potential energy now, actually going to be at at 2. So, where the other 2 go to? Where the other 2 go to? The other 2 actually go to the kinetic energy. Why? Sebab, the, uh, the, the, this uh, coconut or this kelapa, biji kelapa ni, dia kena dia kena turun ke bawah sini, which is at tahap 2 meter sini. Apakah yang menyebabkannya turun? Adalah kuasa or tenaga kinetic. Tenaga kinetic. So, it will take up 2 units. Okay? which is in the blue here. Two units of kinetic energy, it will take up. Baki, baki, baki. Baki ke tenaga atau apa? Baki tenaga is tenaga keupayaan dua unit, which is the rest of this, which is haven't fall yet. Okay? Belum sampai ke uh, the, 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 the floor, the lantai, okay? Or even the tanah. So, what happens is, the potential energy still have two units. Okay? Kinetic energy two units, potential energy two units. So, you know that in terms of the ratio, nisbah, we call it two, two, two. Or if you want to make it singkat, 1, 1, 2, 1. Okay? Because here, here, you can see, it's 2 against 2, 2 against 2. Okay? Yeah? Good. Now, 2. Mark Y to the coconut that has the maximum kinetic energy. Oh, maksudnya apa? Maksudnya, kelapa itu mesti mempunyai tenaga kinetik yang paling banyak. So, we know that, tadi ya, tadi, over here, what do we call it? Ha? What do we call it? What do we call it? Here, PE. Uh, we call it, biji kelapa ini mempunyai tenaga keupayaan yang maksimum. Sebab, it is at the top. It haven't fall yet. So, it has 4 meters of potential energy. Potential energy, 4 meters. Fall to 2 meters, you will have half of the potential energy. Half of the kinetic energy is used when falling. When falling. Sekarang, once that biji kelapa reach on the floor, which on the ground, which on the ground, what happens? What happens? Potential energy dah tak ada. Tenaga keupayaan dah ha, tak habis semua. Because you're not at the height. You're not at the height. That is the requirement of potential energy. You must be at the height. Sekarang, ketinggian dah tak ada. Ketinggian dah dari 4 meter jadi kosong. That means you have converted. Sudah berubah. All the tenaga keupayaan telah berubah kepada tenaga Kinetic. Maksudnya, this coconut here is going to be coconut Y. Because when the coconut is on the ground, maksudnya, tenaga untuk menurunkan ten, uh, kelapa itu daripada pokok sampai ke lantai itu, it is already used up all the kinetic energy. So, maximum kinetic energy is at the bottom. Okay, bottom, which is the coconut at the Y there. Okay, understood, huh? So, let's just make it clear again, huh? Dekat sini, dekat sini, maximum, Okay. Okay, let's, 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 let's write it down again. The cut sini, which is on top of the tree, maximum, maximum potential energy. Maximum potential energy. At the bottom here, maximum kinetic energy. Maximum kinetic energy. Di tengah-tengah ni, setengah kinetic energy, setengah potential energy. Yang akan bagi kamu nisbah satu per satu. Okay, Ken, faham? Okay, so let's go to B. Talking about spring, fantastic. Okay. Talking about spring. So, PQR. Now, question. Based on diagram above, calculate the elastic potential energy possessed by the compressed spring Q. Compressed spring Q. So, you know that it is going to be... Okay, let's see Q, huh? Okay, Q. Okay. So, what happens is, you are going to have... Um, 1 over 2. Okay, 1 over 2, Fx. That is be the formula, which is again find on top here. Okay, so 1 over 2, Fx. Let's obtain the F first. Let's obtain the F. The F is what? The F is the, the force, the compression force or the stretching force. Okay, so if you see here on Q, what happens is it can, you can see that it is 20 Newton. So this is the F. Okay, it can tell you here the force, the F. Okay, so if you check again, Potential energy possessed by the compressed spring Q. Okay? Betul lah. Maksudnya, talking about this one. Okay? So, F, 20 newtons. 20 newtons. Secondly, X, the displacement from the equilibrium. That means, how much it displaces. You can see that original, 30. Original, 30. 
become 15. That means what? 30 tolak 15 means that your compression, your compression or what we call the uh, termampat, okay? Mempat itu 15 cm. 15 cm. 15 cm. So, what happens is we will put this 15 cm as the x. Okay? The f, the x, the other, put into the formula. Put into the formula. Equals to half times with f, which is 20 newton. Make sure you need in newton, huh? You need in newton. Unit is cm, make sure, huh? Okay? Then, you will have times with the one... Uh, uh, Okay, now uh, you want the answer. Okay, you know you want the answer to be what? You want the answer to be in uh, joule. In joule. Okay, you want the answer to be in joule. Energy in joule. And you know that joule actually going to be uh, Newton meter. Okay, going to be Newton meter. So what happens is you must make sure that your and your unit is converted from centimeter to meter. So centimeter to come and meter, you would go and divide by 100. So Okay, so what happens is this 15 centimeters you go and divide with 100 to give you 0 0.15 meter then that is where you are going to plug in here which i will put it in the red color so that you are can see that i have changed from 15 to 0 0.15 then if you calculate in your calculator you'll be able to get the answer which is here you'll be able to get your answer you'll be able to get answer which is 1.5 joule 1.5 joule now let's look at Number two, based on the diagram above, calculate the elastic potential energy possessed by the stretch spring Q. Okay, so here is wrong, huh? It's not Q, it's R. So we'll be talking about this third spring here. Okay, R. So let's see. F, maksud. F, compression. So, same. F equals to 20. So let's put there lah. Okay, terus put there. Times with 20. Okay, what is X? Just now I, talking, just now I told you what. X is... The stretching or the compression. So let's see. Tadi, original 30. Which is here. Original 30. Sekarang dah jadi 45. Maksudnya, how much did it stretch? How much did it stretch? Take 45 cm. Minus with the 30 cm. We'll give it 15 cm. 15 cm. That means, just now inside Q here, it is going to be uh, compressed. Compressed for 15 cm. Now, R is being stretched out 15 centimeter. Okay, so what happens is take the 15 centimeter, do the same here, convert menjadi meter because you want the answer to be in joule. You want the answer to be in joule or the answer to be in newton meter. Newton meter, uh, by the way, huh, don't be confused. Huh? Joule maksud newton meter. Huh? Joule maksud newton meter. Okay, so what happens is 0 0.15 also. So you will get your answer is also 1.5 joule. 1.5 joule. Okay. That means, I believe we have completed bahagian B. Okay, we have completed bahagian B. Next on will be bahagian C. So, we will try to uh, see bahagian C again in another video. So, it's not too much in your head now. So, now we have covered some of the good questions actually. The spring question. Okay, we'll earn you quite a few marks. And then after that, we also have this question which is talking about the space, photosynthesis, all that. And also a little bit of the, about this chemistry and system saraf. Okay, so when you come back in the next video, okay, we will look at... Um, bahagian C which is going to be longer question you have to be prepared to answer bahagian C which is bigger parts of when the marks are okay so remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel turn on that bell beside the subscribe button so you'll be able to hear notifications as soon as I upload the video and then after that remember to uh, like my Facebook and also my Instagram and I'll see you in the next video remember to study smart study fast and you'll be number one so until then goodbye